So now to conclude this lecture, we're going to be looking at the human ear. And the reason why we are focusing on the human ear is because it presents itself as a sense organ that has within it receptors and cells specific to the idea of sensation and the sensory process that we outlined in the previous flowchart. So to begin with the human ear, we'll start with a basic introduction in relation to its function and overall um, specific relationship to sensation. So the human ear has two main functions. So those two functions are as follows. They are, one is very obvious, one of them is in hearing, and also the other function is in equilibrium, or maintaining a balance within your environment. This allows you to stand upright, or let's say when you spin in a circle many, many times and you get dizzy, that's because you're upsetting the equilibrium that's held within your ear. We're actually not going to talk about the equilibrium in great detail, um, but we're going to focus on is the hearing. And the hearing is focused on specifically because this is a major part of sensation, of sensory organ and sensory reception. And speaking of that, let's take a look at the sensory receptors involved in this process. The sensory receptors here, again, it's based off of the stimulus. The sensory receptor we saw in the previous flowchart, the example was a chemoreceptor. The stimulus was a chemical. Here, the sensory receptors are different. They're actually called mechanoreceptors. And if the receptors are different, the things that will receive information, that must mean that the stimulus that's being received, detected, whatever it may be, is different. Now the root here is mechano. And what we're focusing on here is the fact that the ears as a sense organ with sensory receptors are going to be very good at detecting mechanical forms of energy. So that's a very fancy way of saying something quite simple. Mechanical forms of energy. So you might be asking, what does that mean? What is a mechanical form of energy? Well, it's quite familiar to you. It's things like pressure. Pressure is a mechanical form of energy. Sound, of course, that's what you hear. That's a mechanical form of energy. And even stretch. All of these things will sort of mix together within the mechanoreceptor function of the ear to give you a clear and concise sound that can be perceived by the brain. Again, the brain is the one that understands sound and recognizes what happens. The ear is the one that I would think of it as the structure that does the sound or receives the sound as an organ. So, in specific reference to the ear, this is going to be activated. The ear sensory receptors, the mechanoreceptors, are activated when they undergo shape changes. And these shape changes are directly going to result in a ion channel effect. Remember, ions govern everything when it comes to the nervous system, including sensation. And here, the ion channels themselves are going to be linked to what are known as hair cells. And these hair cells are basically going to be the functional unit, I would say, of the ear that's going to be very good at detecting motion. To hair cells that detect motion. Again, this is a mechanical form of energy. Sound is a mechanical form of energy pressure stretch that's going to be detected by a hair cell that's going to allow or be detected because of ion channel uh, effect. We'll talk about what effect specifically happens in just a second in a later flow chart, actually. But for right now, just know that mechanoreceptors in the ear work by changing their shape. The shape change directly causes ion channels to somehow change, we'll talk about how, um, in order to detect motion. And why are we detecting motion? Because pressure is motion. Because sound, which are waves within the air, that's motion. And stretch is also detecting motion. So that's what we have to focus on, and that's what we rely on when we're hearing. So let's take a look at the process of hearing very quickly. Hearing is going to occur when you are trying to listen to sound, right? It's very simple. But why sound? Why does sound and hearing affect mechanoreceptors? Well, that's because sound is technically just waves of air, of air pressure, okay? That's all sound is. And it could also be waves of water pressure depending on where you're listening to sound. It could also be underwater. But for we'll just talk about on land. Waves of air pressure are going to cause sound. 
and those waves of air pressure will be received by the mechanoreceptors within the ear, and thus sound will be heard. Now, the interpretation of sound obviously happens within the brain, but the actual sound hearing, the process of that sensation occurs within the ear only to be perceived by the brain. Okay, I want to make sure that's very clear. In addition to this idea, what we also want to understand about hearing is that you, under, you can hear me and the pitch in my voice and the differences in my voice. If I yell or if I talk very quietly, that's all because of this ability to sense changes in pressure. Okay, The changes in pressure. Why is that? Well, that's because the way that waves travel and how they work within the ear upon, receive, upon, receive, upon receiving those waves is all related to pressure. And that's why pressure is also here. So pressure, sound, and stretch, as we'll see when we get to the function of the ear, specific parts of it are going to be related to hearing. Um, there's a really good video within the playlist. It's done by Interactive Biology, the page, that I highly suggest watching as we go through this human ear a part of this lecture. And I also failed to mention that the human ear is very beautifully highlighted in figure 50.10. Be sure to look at that as we go through the detailed parts um, henceforth. So that covers our look at the human ear. We'll get to the details now of how actual hearing and structure of the ear is related to the sensation of hearing sound.